Creation Science Evangelism presents Creation in Common Sense with Eric Hoven. Welcome to Creation in Common Sense. I'm your host, Eric Hoven. Joining me once again is Cy Tin Bruggenkate from Canada, author and editor of ProofThatGodExists.org. Thoroughly enjoy your website. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We've already looked at several things. We've, we've seen in past episodes how we must trust in the authority of the Bible. We cannot set God's Word on a shelf and argue with atheists on, quote, neutral ground, because that's giving up our position. We've seen that according to the authority of Scripture, there are no such thing as atheists or agnostics or non-believers. Everybody knows that God exists. Not only that, we saw how logic actually proves the God of the Bible. It is borrowed from the Christian worldview. That's right. It unmasks the atheist position. When yes. they use logic to argue against the Bible, they're actually borrowing the foundations of logic from our worldview. The same is the case with science. The, science fundamental, the, thing. the fundamental assumptions of science are borrowed from Christianity. So rather than try to dodge bullets, we take away the gun by showing that they must borrow from Christianity in order to do science. So when somebody says, I believe in science, not the Bible, how do you take away that gun from them and show them what they're really trusting in? Well, you see, science is their God in this situation, yet they cannot account for the fundamental assumption of science. Now, I'm going to ask you to put your thinking caps on for a minute here, okay. and I'm going to talk to you about the fundamental assumption of science. Sounds deep. Good luck. Here we go. Okay, it's not that deep, but, uh, you know, it's new to a lot of people. Okay. The fundamental assumption of science is what is known as the uniformity of nature. And very basically, it's that the future will be like the past. We could not do any scientific experiment. It would be useless if you did not expect tomorrow to be like today. Obviously. When we boil water at a certain temperature and pressure, we expect it to boil at the same temperature and pressure tomorrow. However, without a controlling influence, we have zero basis for expecting tomorrow to be like today. Huh. Zero. And that also takes away the foundation for science. So when the unbeliever says, well, of course tomorrow is going to be like today because it's always been like that in the past. When they say, look at all this observation we have to go on to, to, to show us that, how, how do you answer that? Well, that's what they end up saying, but that's what's known as begging the question. What they end up doing in that scenario is they're assuming what is to be proven in the proof. I'm not asking about the past, I'm asking about the future. So when I ask them, how do you know the future will be like the past, talking about something in the past has nothing to do with what I'm asking. They're assuming the proof in the proof. That's right. Wow, rewind, play again. <laughs> Okay, so how do we as Christians, if the authority of God's Word is our authority, how do we as Christians account for well, uniformity of nature? We have a reasonable expectation for the uniformity of nature based on the promises of God and based on His demands of us in Scripture. Genesis 8.22, for instance, talks about how God promises to keep nature uniform. His demands of us are such that we can expect nature to be uniform or we couldn't fulfill His demands. We have a controlling influence which is God, which is controlling hmm. nature so that we can expect science to be valid. We can expect nature to be uniform. The atheist has zero basis for that assumption. All right, practical application here. We have a foundation for it. They don't. How do you use this in an argument? Well, what's going to happen is they're going to come up with, you know, some scientific objection. I'm sure you hear them all the time. It's going to be this objection, this objection, this objection. Rather than learning how to defeat each of those objections, yeah, every single one. you ask them, what is your basis for science? What is your basis for assuming that tomorrow will be like today, for assuming that science is valid? And I'm telling you, I've been doing this a while, they have no basis. Wow. So their only basis would be to borrow from the Christian worldview, which is what we're trying to get them to admit. That's right. And a lot of times we'll say, well, you don't believe in science. No, we believe in science. But good science does not contradict Scripture. Scripture is the authority over science, not the other way around. Now, this is a whole new way to look at this argument or this approach. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like saying science doesn't prove the Bible, but instead the Bible allows us to do science. That's correct. Without the authority of Scripture, we have no basis for assuming that science is valid. But they're going to say valid science contradicts, disproves the Bible. And you see how ridiculous a claim that is. When the truth is the only way to do valid science is because of the Bible. That's and this is a totally opposite way of looking at things. I love this. This is showing us the Bible is not what's on trial here. We're not saying we got some science to prove the Bible and we got science to disprove the Bible. The Bible is not on trial. Science demands the truth wow. of Scripture. That is pretty incredible. Science itself shows that we believe in God. 
Now, I love, you got a book coming out. I can't wait for that to come out. Until then, Dr. Jason Lyle, fabulous job on your book, The Ultimate Proof, which does a fabulous, really, really good job of explaining these arguments and giving examples from the evolutionists, what they say in response and things like that. We don't have time to cover everything the atheist is going to say because they don't like these kind of arguments and they got a lot of bad things to say about them, don't That's they? That's right. We're going to hear a lot about it. And of course, in these short uh, discussions, we can't cover everything. But this book, my website, and my upcoming book is going to do just that. So Man. stay tuned. I am excited about that. All right, we've talked about logic. We've talked about science. Let's get to uh, a little more of a uh, personal <laughs> subject, morality. We'll cover that in another episode. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll always use creation and science for evangelism. Man, God bless.